Hello and welcome back to Round the Archives in Conversation. We've got a special guest. Oh no 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 nothing special guest. Oh you're very you're very special, Warren. Thank you very much. So Warren is here. Hello Warren. Hello Andrew. Martin is here. Hello Martin. Hello Martin. Hello there. Paul is here. Hello Paul. Hello. Paul. Hello. Uh, and hello. Lisa is sitting hello. on the other sofa throwing things at observing us. and smiling at us in in a in a in a beneficial way. Is that the word? We have a, we have a producer. Yes, yeah, she, she's she's the executive this time. So if oh. we get if we get too saucy, she's going to raise a red flag, aren't you, Lisa? What what yeah. do we go over budget? Budget? Oh, we're going to have to film in a coal cellar in, in three. Don't <laughs> <laughs> worry. Was it on okay. CSO background? It's all done on CSO. Warren, uh, we been improving on this lot. Aren't we? <laughs> we haven't had. Oh, you can tell we haven't done one for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Warren, we haven't had you on the sofa much. I haven't had been had on the sofa for a while in, no. in recent months for obvious reasons mm. and uh, many other reasons too. Yes, but cast cast your mind back, Warren, to what must have been the mid eighties. Very musical. Oh, here yeah. we are in the mid eighties. Look at my yes. Hair. Now, now let, let's work out where what everybody was doing. Of the seventh of September, nineteen eighty-four. How do you know it was that? Because I looked in my diary. What? Yes, I, I mentioned in your diary. Yes. What? What the? <laughs> what the hell have you have you put? Met weirdo on the bus. Man, man wearing home pride shirt sits next to me on bus. <laughs> have brilliant chat about <laughs> Doctor Who. You better explain about the home pride shirt. Uh, yeah, you were in the sixth form at the time, I believe. Yeah. And, you, and I could choose my own clothes. You could choose your own clothes. <laughs> Clearly you had. <laughs> <laughs> he was wearing a long sleeve shirt with home pride um, men, on men it. with bowler hats Flower on graders. It. That's it, flower yeah. graders, yes. Yeah. I dressed up in one. <laughs> hmm. So I was in the sixth form. Yes. So you were um, under me, weren't you? I, 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 oh, does that make me a... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how old were you? Um, I'm two years younger than you. All right. Okay. So yeah. So you crumpet maker. You were doing his crumpet. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Toasted his crumpet. Toasted his crumpet. No, we weren't. We weren't at a public yeah. school, were we? we... No, the pu- no, the public weren't allowed into our school. No, we were. We were at <laughs> Queen Elizabeth's Comprehensive, weren't we? Queen Elizabeth the first. Comprehensive. All oh, right. You. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Queen QE school. QE school, which was fairly common. Yeah. Right? yeah. 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 But in 1984, where would, where would you you been, Paul, at school? Uh, I was still at Oddstock Primary School. Oh uh, blimey! <laughs> uh, which was a, which was a school that was, um, like there were 60 pupils in the whole school. Uh, so it was a lovely country school on the outskirts of Salisbury. You lived in Oddstock. And, uh, yeah, I used to, I used to play my little games of Doctor Who, involved, often involving the Triffids. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I was, and I was doing writing as well. I've never met anyone from Oddstock. I really haven't. The only thing I knew about Oddstock was the hospital. I was born there. Where? Ah, I come from Oddstock. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's that that very hospital. <laughs> it's that old joke. Yeah, my my, uh, my brother was born in that one. I wasn't, but. Uh, but but what about you, Martin? 1984. Well, I, 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 I was probably on airstrip one with uh, Richard Burton <laughs> and uh, Annie, Annie Lennox. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, where was I? I was, I was, I was at college. I was in Wales, actually. Yes, I was in oh, South Wales lovely. at the time. I was, uh, I was, um, I was, I was being a student. I was in them days. I was, I was learning how to do art. I'd say I was learning how to do pro- art professionally, but as we know, what my career has done. <laughs> but yes, I was in I was in South Wales uh, doing art. That's what I was doing. Those days. But in terms of Doctor Who fandom in 1984, I'd not long joined the Dwas, 
Uh, Martin, I believe, had been a member for some time. Oh yes, oh yes, I was in the corner with my cardigan and my, my, my pipe, <laughs> and I sit here with these bloody young whippersnappers. <laughs> but you... T- I, was, I, was, I was like Robert Holmes, only without a <laughs> oh. I was a sort of cadaverous figure without... But in pipe. terms of other fans... <laughs> Uh, did you have much day-to-day contact? No, I, I never. I know I've never met one yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not in real life. Uh, even no. now, no. I've. Um, I, I. I was very, very much in in the in in the Doctor Who closet. Uh, I think people probably knew because I had the books on the shelf in my rooms. But, uh, but um, no, I. I I, uh, I, but I, at that stage, I'd started doing cartoons for the for the magazines and stuff, and writing the odd article for Dear Anno. Is it Anno? That's right. Yeah, yeah. The I, I, I found um, a copy of Tardis the other day, which is the mm. the one with your young ones cartoon in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that that would have, that, that would have been nineteen eighty five, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was about yeah. then. I, 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 I think I did a couple of articles and sent a few drawings by that stage but for some reason I sort of clicked mm. with Anne uh, in terms of you know uh, like a pen yeah. pal kind of thing uh, so I think I actually ended up doing stuff for pretty much everything in that trouble yeah because <laughs> that's also got your article in Silent Companions which is like your your, your yes, memories of that, yeah. little Pertwee and, and Baker so that, I probably need to look at that to remind me what I hadn't really <laughs> since mm. but Paul uh, um, you said you, you were playing yeah. Doctor Who who is though? Who are your associates? No, he was he was playing Doctor Who. He, 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 it's well, his alter ego. Well, I mean, if I didn't have anybody to play with, that didn't stop me. I just keep, you know, I just <laughs> forge on. But um, plenty of games of Doctor Who I have by myself in in my village. Um, it was sometimes better than involving my brother because he just wanted to fight. Um, I did have a, at one point. I did have a band of Tom tomboys um, who, but. I think I might have said before. Everybody want after the five doctors. Everybody wanted to be the doctor. You so nobody got nobody wanted to be the companion. So every every story you played involved. Um, um, so we had like you know tomboys playing male characters um, years before. Uh, now you Jody. see my vision now is is lots of people in curly wigs. And <laughs> <laughs> the tomboys. There was like a gang. Was like, that was their street colours. <laughs> well, the, 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 the the other problem I had in say 1984 would have been that being that depending on what day of the week the episodes were on sometimes they clashed with things I had to do after school which I did not really want to do like Cub Scouts and and I definitely remember a school friend recording the first episode of Planet of Fire on audio because I was having I think was that season the episodes were in on Thursday and Friday or something oh, well, I can't, I can't so remember Cubs was on Thursday there was definitely Friday episodes. I can't remember whether it was. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure. Um, I think I, I, I've just recently watched it with the facts on. And I think yeah, I think it was Thursday. So I would have been Cub Scouts, uh, or not Scout Scouts, just Cubs. Um, hello, Dee Yes, you went alive. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, my cat has just arrived. Um, and yeah, so that was. I did try and get out as many things as possible um, uh, because it was very annoying to miss talk to. Him. Back in the day when I didn't, we didn't have a video, just for something like that, which I didn't even want to be doing. Warren, what was sort of Doctor Who in your life at that point? Was it an obsession? Um, very much so. I mean, um, my first contact with Who was Pertwee's last season. Yeah. Uh, Tom was always my Doctor. Um, funny enough, I never wanted to be the Doctor. I always wanted to be Harry Sullivan. Yeah, we'll get on to that later. Mm. Remind me. <laughs> it was the welly boots in um <laughs> <laughs> welly boots in yes in um Sontaran experiment okay own oh, the duffel, the coat. duffel definitely the duffel, the duffel coat. coat that was the thing mm. that sums up my childhood is harry sullivan's duffel coat <laughs> i remember having a duffel you... coat like that ah. so instead but you couldn't you couldn't be harry sullivan so instead you became paddington bear very similar <laughs> very 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 much so yes but you were <laughs> reading the target books i guess yeah, my first target... Well, strangely enough, my first target book I'd only bought three years previous. All right. And that was the first edition of The Daleks, which I'd found in a second-hand bookshop in mm. um, Portobello Road. And Doctor Who magazine was well and up and running yes, at that point. My first copy I bought in Blantford, and it was John Levine on the 
on the front cover. I that thought you said John Devine selling it. <laughs> <laughs> Standing on a street big corner. Issue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It wasn't Ian Levine on the cover. <laughs> no. it, was, it wasn't. A, it was a small cover. <laughs> but did you get it from the local news agents? I beg your pardon. Did you get it from the local news agents? <laughs> no, no. I bought it at W. H. Smith's in in because um, I had it on regular order. You got it regularly from them. <laughs> yeah, mine was delivered. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, I, I, I can probably beat. I, Hopefully, I think I can beat that because um, <laughs> I have effectively had Doctor Who magazine from the news agent since 1980. Um, I think the the people delivering the papers to our village has changed once since then. But my Doctor Who magazine still comes to my parents, and I pick it up when I go home. Oh, so that's like 40 years. Or wow, something. you've kept somebody in employment for 40 years. <laughs> yeah, it's the only thing that cut. It's the only thing that they delivered to to, to, to my. To my village, <laughs> the only, it's the only job left. <laughs> yeah. I, I I was paper boy for quite a few, well, for two or three years in that during that time. But I I was I wasn't known as a fan. I don't think by that point I, I kept my life. Oh, I I kept my my, I kept my fandom to myself as well. Yeah, and I think it was the unfashionable years to a certain extent yeah. from then onwards. You never mentioned it at school. So, you get so how up. how did we sort of right. come out to each other? I, come I, on. <laughs> you 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 sat there and you had something Doctor Who related in my hand I, in your hand yes and you you got it open and got it out in the open was it your Tom Baker Dolly <laughs> he was pointing to bits of it yes like the scarf and the big floppy so what was it then sorry what was it what did I have in my you hand? had a copy of the monthly and you started reading it yes. and I turned to you and I went ah the Doctor, Ian, Barbara and Susan, because there was an article on there about a first story. Yeah. And you looked at me as if to say, oh. <laughs> and we started... We, you yeah. know the code word. Yes. And um, Was it like a secret handshake <laughs> then? Did it feel like that? It, it, I, 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 I was fu- finally outed and I felt relieved. <laughs> there was another Who fan <laughs> on the bus. I No, it was, it's the way when I said the names, and I do remember this, it was the way... Your eyes just open slightly, yeah, well, and and I knew at that point yeah. we had a long we have a long conversation to have, and it's still going on. All right, it Good was that kind of meeting. We didn't ask about ourselves; we just spoke about who at that point. Yeah, and um, it's just progressed from who to classic television, yeah, to audio to everything Absolutely. to books. You sat next to me, is that right? No, you sat next to me because you got on at Wimborne St Giles. Right. Okay. So if we hadn't chosen the same seat, yep. this Probably would have been wouldn't. blimey. Yeah. That's, w- that's shocking. My whole mm. life might have been different. <laughs> could have been better. Could <laughs> have been <laughs> Sliding doors. You are, gl- you are Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, but, but not, not with these legs, darling. <laughs> <laughs> that's a frightening thought, though, because I would never have joined the Salisbury local group, probably, if I didn't know you. Because I would have been scared of meeting other fans, probably. But you I know, think. I was scared of meeting other fans because I didn't wouldn't know what to what say. they were going to be like. I would never have gone to yeah. uh, a convention. No, never ever would have crossed my mind to go to a convention. Um, we we went to a couple, didn't we? Yeah, we went to Leisure. I dragged Hive. I dragged you off to Swindon, didn't I? So, yeah, and I had to be removed from the video room. Why? Because I was in hysterics of at, laughter. At what? The axons appeared. <laughs> What, in the video room? In the video room, on the screen. All right. And I got most upset because I had to leave. We had to leave to catch our coach back to Salisbury because war games. I just got to the cliffhanger of episode one of the war games. And, and you had to go home. We had oh, to go. Oh. That's, a, that's, a, that's a tough one. It is, well, that's it? a <laughs> biggie, that was. And I'd never, ever seen How, how many years until you saw the, the, uh, the solution? Uh, that must have been 90. When did it come out? 19... Well, it was on video. 1990? 1990, it must have been. Eight, Didn't you have a, ed- you had a pirate edition? No, never that. had a co- pirate edition. No, I had to wait for the actual thing. Um, so how many years would that be? Then? Well, that would have been, what, 1985, 1986? Yeah. The, the, the stress and tension that I lived with for the number of years. Four, Four years, years of sleepless nights and nightmares of Tossing all night. Shot. Tossing and turning all night. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> And you haven't seen him since, but he's here tonight. <laughs> in his urn. Yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah, because I joined the Dwas, I Sorry. persuaded you to come to Salisbury, yes. to, to a meeting. Oh yes, it was like uh, the thoughts that went through my head was, it, <clears throat> this just has all the hallmarks of what you would believe an Alcoholics Anonymous <laughs> meeting would be. <laughs> There's all these people that just sit there and say, "Hello, my name's Andrew, and I'm a Doctor Who fan." <laughs> It's all right, you're all in good company. Because I like the that, way you were rubbing your knees there for <laughs> acting purposes, even though we can't see it. But There's been what, a 13 face <laughs> program. That's kind of yeah, weird. That, because it? it's um, because very much then, who to the BBC was toxic? Fans were very fragmented because of what was happening with the program. And so you really didn't say much about being a Doctor Who fan, no. which was a great shame. A bit like now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I think Martin, you've you've admitted that you've always shied away from sort of conventions oh God, yeah. and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't like, I don't like people no. very much, you know. What I mean? Well, but I, I can identify with that. Because no, I, I, I'm I'm the same as well. Isn't that strange? Are we all like that? I think I think we are a bit. I don't know. Oh, I don't. I don't like people. <laughs> well, that's why we're recording all this. You, in, you see why we're all in separate rooms. You don't. This. You <laughs> lot don't count as people. You, you lot don't count as people. No, but I, I mean, I. <laughs> So I mean, you you met on a bus, and then how many? God, this sounds seedy, doesn't it? Met on a bus, met on a bus, and three three or four years later, I took you to, up to Swindon. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but what did you do in that three or four years? I mean, did that? Oh did no, we um. Thing? Oh no, there's oh. stories there. I used to cycle to your house, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Every Saturday. And I used to show you videos to, show, to listen to audios as audios well. Audios at you, that point. You yeah. had a um, top loader. VHS, didn't you? That's and I right. had a Betamax. Yeah, I could. Uh, right. And we <laughs> mated them, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah. It's a, this is a Wurzel song, <laughs> isn't it? Why you got a great big? Why <laughs> you got a Betamax and you got the key? <laughs> um, but but I mean, when you got off that bus, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we all had therapy did, did, afterwards. I mean, yes. No, he. Did, I mean, did you sort of say, I'll, I'll see you again next no. week? I mean, how did you... How did well, from you... that moment on, we sat next you know, to each other continue. every day, didn't we? Yeah, that was it. Ah, it was that right. was it, okay. yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah, okay. and I had to go and point on the doll a number of times. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was it. Where the, where it, the rubber it, it was quite was. bizarre, because when we came on the bus to come home, we sat next to each other again. And from then on... That was it, wasn't it? Mm. it, it yeah. I think it was very mm. much that we would start the conversation from when we last yeah. left off. Right. Mm. Even if, and in later years, we didn't see each other for a year or two. It, it was very mm. much like, you know, there, there was no gap, wasn't it? But that's, I mean, that's part of, I mean, you know, that's what deep friendships are like, actually. I mean, you know, I've, I've got people I don't see for 23 years. And... <laughs> If I can help it, it wasn't a friendship. Um, it was more of a stalking. Pick, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just you, what I'm saying is you do you can pick up like you'd never you've never been yeah. away. You know, and that's 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 sort of in, indicative of that. But I mean, it it, it was that close, really. With that, yeah, yeah, we we did. I mean, when did you first say come over to my house? <laughs> <laughs> Not in that voice. Not in that voice. Definitely no. <laughs> um, I think we were on the bus. Well, that's the thing. We're, you know, he said, oh, I've got a video, come Won't over and write, see it, kind of. I mean, this is you like, write, young, you know, young person friendships are so much simpler, yeah. aren't they? You know? uh, weren't you writing Genesis, or were we kicking around the idea of Genesis of the Wogans? Well, 1985, we sort of cemented our friendship by listening to Sonic <laughs> Waves and things like that on the bus. Oh, yes, so, yes. So we, we, <laughs> Reenacting we had, trailers on the bus. Yeah, we had tapes. By that point of Alan Hayes's tape scene. Gosh, we had Walkmans then. We had we had so many Walkmans. Walkmans. Oh, you're you're so <laughs> with, with headphones, <laughs> Warren. We're sitting here with headphones on, talking about this. Doctor is Who. no different, except we're not on the top deck of the school bus. Yeah. Good wow. God. This, yes. Yeah, that's a bit of a frightening thought. Yeah. Nothing's changed. Has do, it? do you want do you want to bring in the do you want to bring in the other passenger? <laughs> <laughs> then we used we used to do audio plays, didn't we? Yeah. So we came up with the idea of doing Genesis of the Wogans which is something that's run through our lives for some time. And I would write scripts, and we had you, me, and our friend Darren as well. That's right. 
how did he he get roped into it? He, I think he called at the because you came over because we recorded it on Mysterio, Mum Stereo, with two microphones, with two microphones. Well, one and a half usually. Yeah, wasn't one it? which didn't work half the time. And I think Darren actually called at the time, and we dragged him in, and he said, "Oh, I'll do that." Could you be in our play? Yeah, yeah. could you play thick? He, he played Harry. Harry. Sullivan. So he played Harry. So played you Harry. were denied playing yeah. Harry. Yes. Um, which In fact, you've never played Harry, have I've you? I've never played Harry. I've always <laughs> wanted to play Harry, but I've yeah. never played Harry. Yeah. No. I, I was Because you were the Doctor. I was the Doctor. I was Sarah. You were Sarah. Flipping it. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, and you were he- Sarah and Nida as well. Um, and Grados. Yeah. <laughs> I think I... So, Paul, are you rethinking your entire life? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't exist at this yeah. point. <laughs> so, no, I mean, you're actually now thinking, God, how did I get involved with in these people? <laughs> no, I got my revenge back with... But that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. Jump forward to 1991, was it? I would have been in London then. I'd have moved away from Dorset, so we'd lost contact. Well, it was the day that... Or was it 1990? When was the pilot episode on? 1990 when we recorded yeah. Genesis 1990. Of the that was um in yeah. the in the gravel pit in Salisbury yeah so jump forward mm. to then and we then remounted Genesis the Wogans on video and then roped in Paul because yes, of course by that right, point yes. we knew Paul and Nick and, and everybody they were in the lo- from the, the local, local group. group yes yeah so Paul ends up playing Harry and I had a very long speech which I memorized and then we never got around to recording <laughs> So, so now is your chance. <laughs> come on! Yeah, <laughs> I remember you doing uh, doing a speech state down to camera and about throwing away our weapons of war, looking towards peace. And I was doing a, a, a goose, ja- step. goose step behind you with a gas mask on. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! And you just yeah. look at each other and collapse laughing. Yes, don't you? and that's where it starts with us, really, isn't it? Because yeah. we both have. Uh, propriety of knowing where a conversation is starting to go downhill quickly <laughs> and that we are going to fall about laughing yeah i mean it's uh, a great shame as you said warren you sort of we sort of lost contact a bit in the 90s and i think you are you are a great loss to sutton park because you, you would much. have been I, fantastic i, I will take that with a, as a no, compliment that is a great i would compliment. love to have done sutton park because so if you do a sutton park revisited paul put me yeah. down please <laughs> But that, that's why I think Paul and I are keen to get you involved more in Shy Life, because mm. uh, there, there is a great source untapped in you yet, if you'll pardon um, the expression. Well, I missed, I missed out and um, until we met again. This is the thing. I need Lisa to answer this question for me, who sat in the, sat in the corner. Now, when we met up again... I'll translate. It's all right. Just make <laughs> signs, Lisa. When we met up again... Uh, you and Andrew were assigning and I think it was 10th Planet possibly yes now this is a memory I've got I just need clarification on we were stood in a queue outside yeah we? and then Nick as well Nick came was along there, yeah and at the end of the day did I go back with you two to your house because I have a memory of going is it Elm Park it is Elm yes. Park going to Elm Park on the tube with you two yeah I think you I think we met you there on a separate occasion and walked you back to the house Right, and then I went back on the tube. I can remember yeah. that. Yeah, that's that's what I could. That's the vague memory I have. Yeah. And I was wrestling with that memory the other day, trying to put it in some kind of context when that um, was. Yeah, because I think because we, we've got a picture out there that you took of when we went to the Pyramids of Mars signing. That's and right. Met the, yes. The smiley mummy. Met the smiley mummy from Pyramids of Mars. Yes. Uh, and Michael Sheard. I remember Michael saying Sheard. to Sheardy, "Oh, you haven't got a bottle of scotch on you, Michael." And he leaned under the table, and this bottle appeared. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, so you you'd all arranged to meet in London. This wasn't a coincidence. You didn't all just happen to be in this queue. I mean, you. you this was a group together. outing, as it yeah. were, because we used to meet yeah. up in London right. a fair bit. Yeah. Right. But do you remember? So you hadn't completely lost touch at this stage. Well, we got back together. As n- you contacted me via Friends Reunited, didn't mm, you? That's right, yeah. Good I'd moved to, I'd moved to <laughs> London by then, um, yeah. so that the 90s onwards I'd moved to London. We did go to a signing once in the 80s, do you remember? Mm. We were going to go to a signing, and I can't remember, and the queue was so long. So instead we went to this... The flight stimulator, The flight it? stimulator, where we got our certificates <laughs> for going through a, a meteorite <laughs> storm. And then we got attacked by an Auton, didn't we? Yeah, we met an Auton in a corridor. And then we? went for a cup of coffee with the Auton. 
This just this is, this just basically you're just you're just reenacting yesterday's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but my, my other my other memory of Warren from from the early, very early nineties is that uh, you very kindly um, supplied us with a really mint black and white copy of the Silurians, um, and I got and you got me a copy and um, and, I, and I was still at school and I, I the day after I received it I got up about four o'clock in the morning because I was determined that I was going to watch every episode before I went to school. Oh, um, so, oh I got that from Fiona. So thank you, so, <laughs> I think. Yeah, so thank, thank you again, the lady. <laughs> pleasure, sir. So that, pleasure. That's, that's, the, that's the sort of extracurricular activities that school... <laughs> <laughs> um, so we sort of met up. Then it was all of us three here, isn't mm. it, together, sort of regularly. Because did you, when did you move up to... Dorset from London. I'm so Lisa and I moved to Gillingham in 2003. Yes. In August 2003. And it wasn't long before you came to visit, was it? That's right. And we had a big that. session. We had a big, we had a big <laughs> Doctor Who set. We almost like organised a mini convention just for you. We did. Yeah. yeah. With videos and yeah. DVDs oh, yes, and you had, stuff. You lived in the bungalow. You had a bungalow, didn't you? That's up, right, um, yeah. I can't remember. Was it... Um... Hanover Lane. Yes. Yes. I was there the other day. I was going to say, you, you've been to Gillingham recently, haven't yes, you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but I actually planned a whole day of Doctor Who. And I wrote it all down, didn't I? I made a list about what was going to happen. And, and yeah. <laughs> God, I'm, I was so organised that day. It was amazing. <laughs> We had all sorts on the go. We had a convention, didn't we? Yeah, we had a three-person convention. Oh, talking of conventions. Yeah, go on. You missed out on the Salisbury Federation of Whovians convention, didn't you? You better explain about that. I don't know. Did Paul go to that? The White Hart. Oh, yeah, I did go to White Hart. Yeah, that's the first convention. I I remember the the head of the SFOW, Salisbury Federation of Whovians, close brackets, um, he organised this convention way back in... Because it was when Sophie Aldred joined. That's it. She, this was her, f- yes, unofficially her first appearance in public. Yeah, and we shoved her in a Dalek. <laughs> and mm. uh, I remember, I remember that. And it, the room just erupted because uh, we primed the Dalek up without telling Richard Franklin that Sophie was in the Dalek. But the Dalek asked Richard Franklin, "What do you think of the new companion now she's been cast?" and he was very neutral, and at that point they just lifted the top of the Dalek off, and there was Sophie sat in the Dalek, and I've never seen so many flash bulbs go yeah. off. Because I've never heard her refer to that. I think she's forgotten about it. I think she was. I can when she came into the front door of the hotel, <laughs> she was. At, I was the first person she met. I've got a photograph of her with me, yeah. and I was first because I was on the reception desk. And she was so nervous, mm. absolutely terrified, but so sweet and lovely. So oh. lovely. <laughs> uh, but then again, I called Dick Mills Fiona's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Fiona, your dad's here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Dick Mills tells him. I didn't know who Dick Mills was at that time. I vaguely remember something about you or Andrew Wink or something writing to the BBC. Could they send us episodes? That was me. That was you to I, show. I made a list of episodes that you wanted that from wanted. the BBC for nothing. <laughs> yeah, could I borrow some episodes? I spe- I, I wrote to John Nathan Turner. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I wrote to John Nathan Turner. I said, could we have some episodes from the convention, please? Did he offer you a price? <laughs> no, he, he didn't reply. Oh. But oh, who else did you write to? Didn't you write to Nick Courtney or something? I have the letter from Nick Courtney. Yeah. He got my name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what did he call you? <laughs> Mr. Lenhorn. Because <laughs> my family name was Langdown at that point. And um, <laughs> he got it wrong. I wrote to him because I was a bit cheeky. I, I, really? I went yes. I went through the telephone directory, <laughs> looking up Nick Courtney. Looking up Nick Courtney because he said in an interview, an audio interview, he, he was in a coffee bar in Crouch End, crouching in a coffee bar, crouching yeah. in a coffee bar. For the first thing I did was look up Crouch End. <laughs> Nick Courtney, there he is, and sent him a letter. Hello, I'm writing to you, think, just asking you, um, are you the brigadier? <laughs> Not uh, were you the brigadier, but are you the brigadier? And um, I just asked if he'd do an audio interview. Yeah. And, and he said no. Uh, but bless his heart, he replied. 
with a, a um an autographed I'm not saying don't darken my door how dare you write to me <laughs> but he said oh thank you very much for your nice letter unfortunately i'm not available to do any interviews anymore you stalker <laughs> <laughs> And he sent me a, an autographed photograph, which was one of the postcards of mm. him from Five Doctors. And I thought that was lovely, yeah. even though he got my name wrong. <laughs> Didn't you also try and track down Christopher Robbie? Oh, God, yes, I did try to track down Christopher Robbie. I wrote to what was Television South then, yeah. trying to get hold of Christopher Robbie to ask him if he'd do an interview about Attack of the Cyber. But he, we but also wanted him... Revenge of the Cybermen. He wasn't in Attack of the no, Cybermen. No, 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 Revenge of the Cybermen. <laughs> we wanted him to be in our follow-on from Genesis of the Dar- uh, Genesis of the Wogans, which was... Um, Revenge of the so- Robbies. Revenge of the Robbies. Yeah. And um, we did a trailer for it, didn't we? Yeah, that's as far as it got. And that's as far as it got. And the cliffhanger was, oh, look, it's Chris Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> and so I tried to crack him down to get him to do something, and he, did, he didn't reply. He didn't want to know. <laughs> he didn't want to know who those bleeding loonies are. <laughs> so, yeah, we've had a weird sort of fandom thing. Mm. But, yeah, we used to... Um, uh, uh, we still go to conventions. Well, when was the one that I nearly pushed Phil Collinson down the stairs? Well, that was one of the Swansea. Oh, that Swansea, one of the Swansea ones, jobs. Wasn't it? Yes, yeah. yeah. And I went dancing with Kate. Katie Manning. Katie Manning. Yes. <laughs> I, I hasten to add the Phil Collinson thing was an accident. I was running up the stairs as he was running <laughs> down the stairs, and I managed to catapult him down to the next landing. <laughs> Dear me, you're dangerous. I would. I am. I went to one of the, I went to one of those conventions. I think that was one of the last ones I went to. That's when I met. I think that's the. I already knew Simon, Exton, like, uh, like from email and from from you and stuff. But um, that was the only time I've actually met him. Oh right, think. yeah. Oh yeah, because you did you did come to to Wales, didn't you? Yeah. Just yeah, just that just that was that was the last one I went to. For yeah, because then I went to one more. Recently. Yeah, because I, I think there was one where. We sort of looked round, and Simon was sitting in the next row. I didn't even know he was he was coming or so or something. So mm. he, he would like a- appear as if by magic, like Mister Ben. You know, it's r- <laughs> remarkable. But um, I think now of my first ever panel. Yeah, was Ian Martyr, yeah. Michael Wisher, and Peter Miles, okay. and that was um, when we did. We went to our first convention, at Ledger Hive. Yeah, and I audioed those. And I can't find the cassettes anywhere. Yeah, uh, I was going to say because you, you you certainly would drag a tape recorder around to all sorts of strange locations, wouldn't you? I um I can remember because I wrote for permission to audio record the um the set uh, the their panel. Yeah, from the Leisure Hive people. Yeah, and I remember the cassette stopped halfway through, and I sort of sneaked across at all fours. <laughs> To turn and it to over. To turn it over. And Ian Martin's just sat there waving at me. And I'm like, Harry Sullivan's waving at me. Get the cosmic tape in. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> but now it's weird. Then I have no fear. Yeah. Uh, and when you uh, introduced me to... Um, my brain's gone blank now. I don't know who. You're my... make, it, make a sign. Make... <laughs> Isle of Wight. Isle of Wight. Sheard. Sheardy. Sheard. When you first introduced me to Sheardy, I was like gobsmack really quiet yeah and when we first go to conventions you know davros yeah and i'm like oh, hello I, I, i've gone back to regressing back to fanboy i go really quiet i get really uncomfortable even when i was with jackie bless jackie pierce bless her heart yeah um i was like really shy and that's <laughs> you know how i gregorious i can be um gregorious that's gregorious. a chant <laughs> sorry yes that's, that's a chant in church Gregorious. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Gregarious. Dear. That's him. Yes. <laughs> um, I just go very shy. Mind you, Jackie had touched me before, hadn't she? Yeah. In the underground station, but that's another story. What, what, what was that one about Peter Davison and the, <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the machine? Oh, yes. Um, the end of the day. I like doing that with my hands. The end of the day, everyone's gone off to dinner. And I scuttle off down towards... Uh, was the, it Tesco's? Tesco's, Tesco's Extra. And above Tesco's... Express. Express was the Holiday Inn, and that's where I was staying, because I couldn't afford the, the expensive... I was in the cheap seats, mate. <laughs> I was in the bunk bed. And Peter Davison's in front of me in the queue, and he's got about two or three items. <laughs> and he goes to the self-service. 
And for once in my life, I thought, I am not the only human being that does this. Beep. 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 Unexpected item in the bagging area. Takes it out. Beep. Places back. Unexpected item in the area. Bagging area. <sighs> Goes Peter. Beep. Unexpected. It's in the f bagging area. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Who said a rude words. <laughs> That's going to have to be bleeped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, but you know you you were expecting that. I knew that was because the context was coming yeah. there. Doctor Who said a real word. <laughs> He's really normal, isn't he? <laughs> and didn't you say he went up in your estimation? He went right up in my estimation at that <laughs> point. He hates them as well. <laughs> But what about other sort of celebrity encounters? Because you, 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 you have you have met a few people on strange occasions, haven't you? Jackie Pierce on the train. On the train, I was in uniform and I worked for the transport police at that moment. We got to Elephant and Castle, and she got on the train. Yeah. Jackie, bless her heart, I don't know. What she was every time I saw her, she was always immaculately turned out. In clothes that stood out a mile, so everybody would turn and see her. She she literally glided past me and sat in the seat of the tube station on uh, the tube train, where I was, uh, where I was sta next to where I was standing in the doorway. The doors close, the train pulls out, and I'm looking at her reflection rather than looking at her. And the next thing I feel on my leg <laughs> is Jackie Pierce rubbing the side of my trousers. <laughs> So there's this policeman quietly going red. And I turn and I look at her. And then she pats my knee and goes, yes, darling, it is me. <laughs> I get off at the next station. I'm absolutely petrified. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so I do sort of find weird people in weird situations. <laughs> but... <laughs> You've, you've rather st you rather stumped me with that one, Warren. But we've we've talked to sort of Nick and Paul and, yeah. and Martin uh, about this. That I think for us, Doctor Who, although it's the the centre of our sort of interest, it is very much the the gateway drug to everything else as well, isn't it? It's a lovely foundation in which to start because yeah. you've got something to guide yourself from your early years, mm. uh, but then it moves on to I like that actor. They may be a guest actor. They may be a lead actor. And you go, well, let's take a look at what other work they've done. Mm. And in this world that we live in, where we own a few DVDs, so he says looking at your... I can barely see you I, behind them, Warren. I cannot see the wall for your DVDs. <laughs> but we are now in a world where things have become more accessible. And then we've got social media and we have platforms like YouTube. Yeah. And we're able to dig deeper and i think that's the challenge more and this little thing oops sorry this it's little things that are triggered from as you would say a base memory that we have as a child mm. or as a teen as we're growing up that you'll watch something because there was something you played me <laughs> <laughs> uh you're often doing this showing me things yeah uh, that will suddenly go snap yeah i know i know what's coming up next yeah I really like trying to jog people's memories. If they say they've got a half-remembered thing in their head, and I, it's it's always a challenge to me to try and precisely work out what that actually was. So you said about your diary. I've never kept a diary. But ju just briefly tell me, because I, I don't really know, what level of detail would you have in your diary? Because I know when Alan Hayes was trying to do some stuff on tape zines yeah that you had listed what you'd done and recordings and things like that so did did, did you record a lot of dates in your um, diary? i only kept a diary whilst i was at school and probably until 89 mm. 90 when i moved up to london yeah um but there was no particular pattern to that diary some some of it would be blank and some of yeah. it it would just be it would just be things that i really wanted to record in my diary that were oh, so i was worthy of it then yep yeah, you're an important thing in my life <laughs> oh god did i just <laughs> say that out loud oh please give me that bottle of wine and a straw please um, uh, but no it's 
some things and oh this is going to sound even worse no, now. Come on. some things in life uh, you know, are in, worth recording are, are worth recording yes yeah. friendships immortal friendships are a rare thing in life but we all have immortal friendships of some kind along the way on this on our journey so even my wedding is not recorded in my diary <laughs> so there you go that's how privileged you are oh, me. but martin you you've said about your your scrapbook yes and that you you kept that going for a long time i believe so um yeah i suppose i did about 15 yes years. so that's the thing these were things that you felt worthy of keeping well, I, I don't know. I, 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 yes, I mean, well, they're still. I can see them they're next to me. <laughs> I can look things up for you. Um, the thing that fascinates me is that that I, I, I certainly see uh, sort of that sort of fandom, such as it was, as being a kind of a gateway drug. It was, you know, all all the other telly that I became interested in was was through through that prism. You know, so it's it's definitely it's definitely changed the way I look at telly. I mean, I mean. By the time I was at college, I was I, I sort of discovered sort of other uh, magazines like uh, Prime Time and what have you, and suddenly you sort of opened up these things. I, I mean, one of the the things that changed me was the uh, Arrow paperbacks of the um, the Quatermass uh, scripts, which were republished in in seventy nine, and that sort of took me into a whole sort of sort of different. The, oh, there's there's other things. You know, and, and and starting to find out about other things and joining those dots, and suddenly here we find ourselves, sort of what forty odd years later, you know, sort of just spending all our time sort of thinking about old television. But what what about you, Paul? Um, in in terms of diaries and things like that, did you do much in that that uh, department? I had. I, I would do it for a few months, and then I'd I actually found one. Um, and recorded, I've actually recorded some bits from it from like a few months in 1986. Um, but yeah, I went through different stages. I, I know Nick is a very big um, diary keeper, or certainly was. Um, but when during the 90s, we, we, we'd often have video um, sort of meetups, and I'd sleep over in this little camp bed that was next to his bed, and, and he'd always be doing it. He'd always, well, I'll turn the lights out in a minute. I just got to do my diary. So he was, he he he, he always uh, uh, did he did his for years. He had five, like five year diaries and everything. Um, I think I did I think I did manage to do a five year diary, but I I haven't come across it for a while. Um, but then Sutton Park was like a a semi <laughs> a, a, a diary mixed in with all the surreal stuff, in the same way as um, the Shy Life um, has has completely you know straight diary episodes and then mixture mixtures thrown in the middle so yeah i've always dabbled in different forms of diary not necessarily in print. yeah it's, it's weird i've just never felt the need to write to write that sort of stuff down it's just just i feel like the old, uh, so how do you how do you remember uh, you have an exceptionally good memory don't you well i i i, I do seem Except to ha i do seem round. to have that uh, that sort of mind that you know, even if I can't remember a thing, I can work it out from another route. So I, mm. I, I can sort of remember, I mean, like genome, for example, is, is an absolute godsend to somebody like me because you can, you can come in via other, other routes, if you see what I mean, that I, I might not remember when it was on, but the moment you show me the schedule or something like that, it all starts to click into place. Like... I, I missed that because of Great Aunt Mabel's wedding. Well, well, that that sort of thing. So, um, yeah. Well, when when we did the the goodies rule, okay, I thought, oh, that that's the silver Queen's Silver Jubilee transmission, because I had that bit of paper with the invite to the to the party, and I I was cross that I had to go to the the party because I was going to miss the goodies. I remember that. And, and likewise, I remember for the first episode of Blake Seven, the Carl Sagan lecture was on, on the other side, and and I, I do remember that I saw Blake Seven and then switched over and saw the tail end of the lecture, and it is just just weird. I, you know, I don't physically remember pressing the button, but I, I can remember those two things being on at the same time. So yeah, so it's kind of trigger memory, really. You know? So basically, someone can show you any. any 
sort of program from a certain era. There, there are associations you, you, in my head that yeah. you know what what the, what the wallpaper was like and things like that. You know, um, were you, were you audio taping? I didn't audio tape until the Five Doctors. Right. What are you laughing at, Warren? So, so that you haven't got you in the background. No, 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 on BBC no. One. You want to shut up. No, that, your man. recording of the Six Million Dollar Man oh, was that, absolutely yes. wonderful. I have to say, because Nick has a few recordings of himself being very young. What about you, Paul? You said you'd unearthed a few quite early stuff with your brother. Yeah, um, I, I didn't even realise. Well, I, I hired a video camera in the summer of 1990 and did a. Uh, a film in the woods in my parents' house with one of my friends, uh, Danny from school, who I met in a not too dissimilar way to how you and Warren met. And how, um, how old would you have been in 1990? 1990, I would have been 16. Um, right. Okay. Right. Which um, is a bit Blair Witch, that isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, I then found a tape when Nick was digitising stuff of almost the exactly. I, the exactly same thing that I re- that I filmed with Danny. I mean, that was ad- the thing with Danny was mainly ad libbed, um, but there was a there was a very similar recording with my brother um, with a very similar storyline uh, from about. I, well, I, it's hard to say because the tape wasn't marked up. But I was shocked because I didn't. I don't remember th- thinking when I did the video. Oh, let's just remake what I did x amount of months before on audio. Um, and there were differences, but it was. It was basically both of them were two handers with people running around the woods sh- shouting quite a lot <laughs> and, and with some sort of sci fi storyline involved. But, um, yeah, I mean, we still find we still find bits and pieces. Uh, I have to be very careful throwing away tapes that are blank, presum- presuming that they're empty. It might just be that the uh, it never got a sticker on the tape or the t- sticker's fallen off. So. Do you remember once that um, when I moved up to London and I came to visit you both down in Gillingham mm-hmm. that I lent you a, I think you still got it, a VHS copy of The Wrath of Calm. And the person, um, uh, my flatmate at the time was a big Trekkie fan and we mm-hmm. used to lock horns about who and Trek. And one night we got very drunk and discovered that if we plugged a microphone into the video recorder and put tape over the holes <laughs> on the video this um the, the release of yeah. wrath of calm we ad-libbed it you redubbed it in we other redubbed words. it yeah. and, and uh one take only <coughs> redubbed it doing all the voices we were very drunk and it just descended into absolute fast because we started to do the um, sound effects as well <laughs> <laughs> so if you dig that up, I would really like to hear that again at some I, point. I, I, it will be. I, I, re- I remember you did yesterday's Enterprise. Oh gosh, yes. Oh yeah, we I were, remember that. Uh, that was another episode where we were extremely drunk and we went, "Come on, let's stick in a Star Trek and redub it." <laughs> <laughs> and we did that. So was it, even, was it fairly filthy? Yes. <laughs> yes, um, and it was. Um, and really, I'd never lost the wonderful sort of Mickey taking fandom bit mm. because um, I'm I'm the person that you hear on audio is. Yeah. Well, I think I think it's true that you're serious about what you love, but when you love it that much, you want to take the pee out of it, and that applies. That's to, because I love it so much. Yeah, yeah. that applies yeah. to people and to telly as well. Absolutely, I yeah. I have a uh, and I include everybody here as very dear friends of mine. Mm. Uh, because I'm very particular about the people I have around me, and yeah. I, I'm very particular. I'm actually quite a shy person. The person that you hear on the um, the the audio casts is is not John Noakes. It's not a John Noakes. Yeah. It's not an invented character. I feel very relaxed because of the but people I'm with. But it's a persona. And it's... But um, yeah, if you met me, I'd be very quiet. Yeah, and not that. Yeah. I remember when you took me up Bristol. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> took yes. up Bristol Gorge? <laughs> when you took me up Bristol. Lisa's this, this just raised a red flag. To, to, to see to see Pertwee <laughs> on, oh, yeah, on to, stage. And I nicked your wallet. Yeah. No, no. I'm sure you took along a tape recorder, because I remember sitting on the docks, <laughs> ad-libbing yeah. into, a, into a microphone. I may well have. We, are you I have st- no idea where that's gone. 
neither have I. Um, you were talking about historical recordings. The first sort of recordings I was doing was when I was seven and eight mm. with a cassette recorder I took to London with me. Right. And uh, when we did Genesis of the Wogans, I actually used the background noise of a double-decker bus that I'd recorded then. In I, I still had the cassette, but I interviewed my great-uncle, right. who was born in 1920s, about life of growing up. I remember doing that when I was seven. I don't have that cassette. I would love to hear that cassette. And I can remember enjoying that and doing both sides of the C60 cassette about his childhood and growing up in, you know, in, in the 20s and 30s. Because, Paul, you say you've got um, your great aunt, was it Jessie, on, on, yeah. uh, on mm. Sutton Park? Oh, yes, on many episodes. And she... Uh, a little snippet of her saying, um, "Do you think he knows my secret?" appears on every episode of the Shy Life. Yeah, well. um, and we were talking about that today, Nick and I, about how um, audio doesn't date in the way that a photo or video does. Mm. When you look at it, and you think, "Oh, that's grainy." Um, that that recording that I use in, uh, with my great aunt that could have been recorded yesterday. It doesn't sound twenty five years old. Um, but, uh, I suppose we'd just better explain about that Pertwee reference, hadn't we, Warren? That we went to see the ultimate adventure, didn't we? We did go to the ultimate. Is that where we walked past the ladies of the night? Uh, we had to go back to the train station, yes. And um, we walked past the wrong area. And I didn't know where to look. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you both. <laughs> and, and, and we didn't know where to look 15 times. <laughs> we we yes. went round that block many a time. <laughs> Filling, yes, with your small change. And. Um, <laughs> We got to the railway station, got onto the platform, and we sat there, and there's nobody there. And we got a bit concerned, and this guy came along, didn't he, from the railway company, yeah. and went, what are you doing here? <laughs> uh, wait to go back to Salisbury. You won't be waiting there, there's no train. And I can remember the horror on both of our faces <laughs> at that point, going, how the hell are we going to get home? And he said, oh, there's a bus out the front. Yeah. Just for you two. <laughs> Just for you two. We were disappointed <laughs> to find out there were other people on the bus. <laughs> but we got to the bus, didn't we? Yeah. And then we all went to our respective homes when we got back. And didn't I speak to you the next day, or did yeah. you phone me and say, have I got your wallet? Yeah. Oh, no, we reported it at the railway station because you got off and the bus drove off and you went to me, have you got my wallet? Like I'd lift your wallet. <laughs> like, like you'd half inched it. Yeah. <laughs> and he'd left his wallet on the bus. God. See, we never did anything sensible, did we? <laughs> it was always a consequence. Absolutely. Like, I, I, I was thinking about um, how Andrew and I used to uh, do Sutton Park on location. You'd just show up, <laughs> and, 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 and and I remember we went to the new, to the New Forest, and I was just trying to wonder how much of. So perhaps we went out and filmed for a few hours, well, because we would have been filming almost continually. I wonder how much of our conversation was actually re in the real world, P possibly in the car. We talk about we talk about what we were going to record, but otherwise, pretty much all of the time we would have spent together would have been in a fictional world, mm. um, uh, like being chased by uh, ball bearings. <laughs> <laughs> and Martin, may I ask, when you do your cartoons, <laughs> and t t when you've done your Who cartoons or other television related cartoons how far back do you go from your personal memories to create those characters or create that situation do you take something from your past um, and place that and project that into the uh, the image you create I, you know, I, I funny love i've never actually sort of analyzed it um i just you know if the idea comes i do it i mean i'm, I'm quite confident now that i can draw most of them without any kind of reference mm -hmm. to that's, that's kind of that's kind of fun so I did a I did a quite nice drawing. Well, I thought it was quite a nice drawing of, of John Persby and uh, Katie Manning about three months ago, which was all done just. I was just sat and drawing it, you know, which is quite nice to do. Whether whether the gags, I don't know. I I tend to just have a look at sort of what we're talking about and what's going on online and um, try and try and desperately to come up with something <laughs> for tomorrow morning. Well, well, Warren, That's, how but, well do you think Martin captures me, Lisa, and you? Spot on. Yeah, spot on. Yeah, I have to agree. Yeah, yeah. I always raise whenever it pops up in my inbox, it raises a smile. Yeah, because it's you hit the button and it, I know I'm going to chuckle. Yeah, 
And so, yeah, Martin, you, you've hit it right on the nail there. You absolutely have. Not just in image, though, but I think in relation. Oh, absolutely. As well. the, 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 the banter and yeah. uh, between between the characters is spot on. Absolutely spot on. I'm, I'm just raiding your, your your own Twitter feed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and actually listening to the conversations you have. It's got nothing to do with it. <laughs> but that's still a skill, isn't it? To be able to yeah. get that in a little tiny little capsule, I think. There. And you've never met as well. No, that's that's the that's weird the thing. That's the amazing thing. I mean, yeah. we're sitting here and, you know, I'm, I'm talking to Warren and I'm talking to Paul and I'm talking to Martin and there's no difference. That Although we're at disparate ends of the of the country and you know one of us hasn't met the others well, so it's, it's, just, it's just all well oiled yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very well oiled but 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 essentially i think martin has done the same thing as warren has done is that he's happened to sit next to us on the bus but on a on a virtual bus if you see what i mean that we just happened to say to martin would you like to do something and it's all stemmed from there, really. It, it, it's very, it, I think it's very interesting the way that we've sort of all fallen in with each other. I, I, I think that's that's very odd. Right, it's just my desperate desperate need. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I found that with uh, um, with some of the people I've recorded mm. with in the states. I mean, I've never met Toppy, and, and yet we've done everything from articles to uh, ad lib um, for for both our shows. Uh, and it's you know yeah, well, we might as well have met. <laughs> um, uh, you can definitely connect without meeting people. Uh, it always makes me mad when people kind of go, "Well, they're not real friends, are they? You haven't met them. They're not real friends." Well, um, well if you would met some of my real friends, you explain this. This suddenly all becomes very clear. <laughs> they, they've met me. <laughs> But you said about that that, well, that thing about being nervous, Warren, mm. in real life. So, are we t treating this conversation as not real life? No, we're try uh -huh. we're treating this as a safe environment to be able to talk amongst friends. Yeah, friends that are value. But I mean, everything's I mean one one step really, isn't it? I mean, because the people who listen to this, you know, both of them will <laughs> will kind of you know th their perception of you is not how you see yourself. And the, the sort of nature of these relationships is all in their mm. head, and and they probably actually, if they sort of actually did meet us, they go, oh, not as tall. <laughs> <laughs> definitely as definitely as, as well. I'm aware, as I'm as, and I'm as tall as I'm ever likely to be. <laughs> you don't sound that tall on the radio. <laughs> Are you sitting down? Well, yeah. this is um, I mean, I my job entails me dealing front. Dealing with the public, and sometimes you more, poor sod. More often than not, not in the best circumstances. But um, I, I wear, I wear a uniform, and I quite happily hide behind that. Yeah. But do you adopt a different persona when you put your clothes on? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> oh, get you! Um, Are you um, Are no, you no, Paul. Paul was naked podcasting this afternoon. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, me rum barber. But Paul, you, saw, what, you yes. saw Warren in uniform, didn't you? Be yes. careful where you go with this. No, 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 no. <laughs> Do you, did you have a different attitude to him? <laughs> <laughs> Were you minding your P's and Q's? and Pierce did. <laughs> well, well he, he gave him his wallet back. <laughs> yeah. What's it like to see Warren in uniform he, for the first time? He was, he was sprung on me. So, um, <laughs> he sprang on you. Uh, to to be well, fair, that you, you, he was nicking me, mate. Yeah. You had it. You had him um, in uh, uh, the time I remember. You, you had him with you, but you didn't tell me you were going to have him with you. So it was more of a surprise. Of, I think that was the first time I'd seen Warren in a very long time. As well. Yes, um, <laughs> I. Uh, this this was all their fault. I just turned up to say hello, and they said, "Oh." Hide behind there, jump out and arrest him. You'll like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was having me colour felt, sir. So, um, yeah, the, the, you asked me, the, am I the person that puts the uniform on? Or am I the same? No, I'm not. No, because not. I've, and I don't mean that to say I'm a nasty person. <laughs> uh, I don't mean to say I'm a rude person. But I'm a person who uh, you have to protect yourself yeah. upstairs and the character that you genuinely are because mm. unfortunately it's one of those things where 
you can't always you cannot I cannot be like this. No, it's, it's, no, no, no. Be like this. Good God, no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I mean, I, I mean, I don't imagine any of of, of us. You know, I mean, I'm obviously not working, but I mean, I'd, when you're at work, you're a different. Oh, person, absolutely, yeah. young. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Although, although I would say that I know I've heard you, you like um, you were saying like you weren't out about Doctor Who, and, and I know Nick said, oh, he was. He, he never tells people at work. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm the exception because I was loud and proud about Doctor Who even when it wasn't in that, at that sort of time we were talking about by, like back in the early 80s uh, when it wasn't popular. I still shouted about it all the time. I had to be told to shut up about talking about it with my friends. <laughs> and, and at work, I, 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 I've always talked about liking Doctor Who even when it wasn't popular before it came back. Um, so, But then I was also an ABBA fan during the 80s <laughs> when ABBA, before ABBA was popular. That's all right, again. I'm an ABBA so fan. I think I just... I think I just wanted to pick the unpopular things and and, and be ch- and champion them. Bizarrely, so, uh, mm. uh, did you did you work in in what you might call an understanding environment? I, I they, well, mostly li- libraries are pretty nice places to work usually. Mm, uh, the ones that I, the, the, the places I've worked anyway, they have. Because I, I obviously a, a lot of my work's been in in, in places that are, are very you know the th- the only thing anyone can be passionate about is football. Oh, yeah, yeah. and I've. And I've never been able to sort of be passionate no. about football, and so, and if I'd sort of said, "Oh, I quite like this," you know, the, the piss that would have been taken. I've frankly. usually been the the own, in the even if I've been somewhere where there has been lots of men, I've been mm. in the library. That hasn't been the case. I've been the only mm. man, mm. Um, uh, so I've been able to say what I like. You know, mm. and the, and the I have to say, in 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 my line of work, there are loads of Doctor Who fans. Mm. It's quite weird from sort of the um, late 90s onwards if you mentioned it in conversation or I went to a training session about 18 months ago in Cornwall and the person gets started talking about uh, compartments uh, in this example we were putting together and he said you know just like Moonbase Alpha on Space 1999 uh, half the room get that half the room don't because they're younger people but then it just became random references or quotes were thrown in from sci-fi programs but it's always been like that in the the area of work that i've been in Mm. there are are a sci-fi fans weirdly enough in that job there are a hell of a load of them oh there's an interesting psychological sort of study to be done there isn't there yeah (laughs) that's one for somebody's thesis isn't it absolutely Oh, haven't you even no? registered that? No, no, yeah, no. yeah. I think it's the escapism. Okay. Of taking you away from what you do and what you see normally. Mm. Gosh, that's, that's got a bit deep, hasn't it? Yeah, let's not go. Let's go. Yeah. No, so because I, I, I'm actually interested. By okay. It, I, I, when, when I when I uh, I was in in conversation with somebody in a pub once upon a long ago, and and I and they sort and I sort of mentioned you know the. Uh, the, there are Trekkies in the office, and you know people who are interested in Lord of the Rings or Gillian Anderson or whatever. And, um, and someone said, "Oh, well, you would in your job, wouldn't you?" Because it was graphic design. I thought, I don't know. Really, I've known some people in graphics who are the you know the least interested. Mm. In that sort of thing. So it, 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 it's kind of fascinating that that jobs and these things do go hand in hand. Yeah. Mm. I think there might be some uh, discussion for the future there. <laughs> yes. But we're coming up to. Uh, nearly an hour and ten. Well, thank so you for having me. We'll have to draw it to a close now. So we'll say thank you to Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you to Martin. Thank you. Take care. Thank you to Lisa, who's waving from the sofa. She's waving from the <laughs> sofa. <laughs> oh dear. And thank you to Warren for being our thank very for, special guest. <laughs> thank you for allowing me to be here tonight. Thank you. And we'll see you again at some point. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Take care.